Moses is coming out of the presence of God and he's like, dude, I hear sounds. And his, his assistant's like, I think it's a battle. And Moses is like, that's not the sound of a battle, that's the sound of a party. If you've ever been at war, you know war sounds different than parties. And he comes down and he sees everybody in the middle of this mess. He throws the Ten Commandments down, they crash and break. He calls the people to account. And he goes back up into the mountain. And here we are at Exodus 32, 31. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, what a terrible sin these people have committed. I love this about Moses right here. He does not whitewash this. He's like, you know, God, I think that perhaps you and I made a miscalculation in judgment and we spent too much time up on the mountain together. The people just kind of got nervous. He doesn't excuse it. He confesses it for what it is. It is too easy for us to try to excuse what we've done. It's not that big a deal. He's straight up. It is horrible what these people have committed. They made gods of gold for themselves. And then look at verse 32. But now, if you will only forgive their sin. But if you can't forgive their sin. But if not, then then erase my name from the record you have written. Moses stands in the line of fire between God and the people and says, if you can't forgive them, then take me and let the wrath that should be poured out on these people come on me. Let it be me. My friends, this is the definition of non-apathy. This is what you didn't see in the video. Just one of those bystanders walking up and going, okay, I don't know what's going on between you guys. I don't know why you feel the need to kick the crud out of her. Maybe she did something wrong. So if you need vengeance, fine. Do it to me and let the girl go. You don't see that in that story. This is Moses, not just to a bunch of thug kids in front of God, going, God, at best, you should leave these people in the desert and ignore them and let them see how it works out. But the truth be told, you should just smite them, destroy them right now. They're ungrateful, wretched people. So take all that and put it on me, if you have to. Put it on me. This is the antithesis of that. And it's awesome because this theme repeats a couple times throughout the Bible. If you, if you take your Bibles and, and you just go set, well, a whole lot of books, because we're going into the New Testament, and that's more than halfway through it. We're going to the book of Romans. You'll get into the, into the New Testament where you find the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or the book of Acts, and then Romans. Um, and we're going to go to chapter 9. This book is written by Paul. Paul's a guy that's an interesting guy because he, he was raised a good little Christian, except he wasn't a Christian. He was a good little church-going Israelite. And he did not accept Christ. And so... Um, he actually goes on the war path against those who believe in Christ. And he's on the way to this, this town, um, on the road to Damascus, and God knocks him off his horse, blinds him and says, dude, you're fighting against the wrong guy. I'm really it. And he goes through this massive conversion moment, and he becomes a, a missionary of Jesus Christ. And he says this, Romans chapter 9, starting in verse 1. With Christ is my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. 